Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening once again from here in Jelly and again it happens to be a pretty chilly evening today also. But anyway, we welcome each one of you for the second session of Business Combination India's 103. So if you have already actually are in touch with us either through SES or through what we call YouTube live classes, then definitely once again a very lovely good evening Krishna Gaur and to everyone. Correct? So first of all, quickly, I am going to recap what we did in the last session, just to actually uh, make you sh make me make yourself sure that you should not lose out on any important point. La Good evening, we pulsing also. So last time when we started, we started off in this manner in order to understand the business combination. First of all, while starting the class, I told you it happens to be a pretty technical chapter, pretty important, important, formidable, and more than that, it's a pretty lengthy chapter. But anyway, when we started the chapter, I told you, for example, if you are an entity and your investment range in the other entity happens to be in between 1 to 19.99 percent, in that particular case, the investor E1 will be known as investor, E2 will be known as investee entity. And if your investment rate ha happens to be in between 1 to 19.99%, I told you in the last, last session that such sort of investment are treated as normal investment. And importantly, under this, the investor is going to account the investment in the separate financial statement only and as per India's 109. And India 109 states that investments must be recorded at fair value. Is it clear to you? Good evening to everyone. Now I cannot take the names of everyone. Sometimes it becomes very difficult. So pay attention. I'm quickly recapping the things. Then I took a second case wherein I spoke about this particular fact that there is an entity by the name of E1. It has investment in the range of 20% to 49.99% in the other entity. In such a situation, other entity will become your what we call associate entity, no doubt about that. Under such a situation, important point is that the investor entity will have to prepare two types of financial statement, one separate financial statement, another one consolidated financial statement. And separate financial statement as a professional student you need to keep in your mind will be prepared under such circumstances as per India S27. While consolidated financial statement shall be prepared as per end AS 28 if other entity happens to be your associate entity. And the third point which we took was pretty important one wherein I spoke about this particular fact that my investment range is either 50% or more than that, correct, in the other entity. Then other entity will become our subsidiary entity and other entity is also known as acquiry entity. And you will be known as investor entity will be known as parent entity or what we call holding company or acquirer company because this time now you have got the control over the other enterprise on account of majority stakes. Correct. Under such situation, as we saw in the last session, we are supposed to prepare two types of financial statement. We means the investor entity, the parent entity. One. That is separate financial statement. Another one is consolidated financial statement. Separate financial statement shall be prepared as per what we call India S27. But consolidated financial statement, this is the important point. On the date of acquisition, parent company will prepare consolidated financial statement. And at the year end and subsequent year ends, it will have to prepare the consolidated financial statement. Correct. When it will prepare the consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition, I told you India S103 will come into play. While at the year end and subsequent year end, whensoever we are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement, in that particular case, we will have to apply India S110. Is it clear to you? Then I also told you about what we call some facets of India S27. India S27 simply states that whenever the parent entity is going to do the accounting for investment in associate or subsidiary that it will have to prepare the separate financial statement also and such investment will be recorded either at cost or at fair value as per India's 109. Further, if you happen to actually receive any dividend income, even that dividend income will also be credited to profit and loss account in the what we call separate financial statement. Is it clear to you? Then also we took the concept of contract control. I told you that control can be acquired either through majority stakes or by way of agreement where an agreement could be with respect to composition of board of director or with respect to what we call control of relevant activities. Correct. Then after that, after that, I told you one very important aspect. 
that we can get the control over the other enterprise either through majority stakes or by way of agreement. But sometimes we get the control over the other enterprise by simply taking over all their assets and liabilities. In such a situation, in such a situation, no question of preparing any consolidated financial statement would arise simply because of the fact that the other entity now has lost its existence. Is it clear to you or not? Then we talked about business combination. Business combination simply means when an entity acquires the control over the business of the other entity. We saw what we mean by business. Business comprises of three elements, input, processes and output. And we should be in a position to integrate the input and processes. And then we should also be in a position to generate some revenue. Then only it will be called as a business. And other entity must meet the definition of business. Then only India's 103 will come into play. Importantly, in the last session, in the final stages, we were talking about what we call accounting. I told you that generally this particular standard states that on the date of acquisition, acquirer company will have to do the accounting. On the date of acquisition, when we do the accounting, the first step is to identify the acquirer, which means that in whose books the accounting will be done. That means for the purpose of accounting, who is going to be the acquirer. This is the first step. And I also told you generally the legal acquirer legal acquirer remains the what we call accounting acquirer also but under rare circumstances it could be a possibility wherein we will see that a legal acquirer is not the accounting acquirer then under the second step we were discussing that how to record and measure the assets and liabilities of the acquiry company in the first step i told you the general principle is that whatever assets and liabilities which are appearing in the books of the acquiry company, whatever assets and liabilities which are appearing in the books of the acquiry company, you will have to record only those assets and liabilities. This is the general principle. Please don't lose sight of this particular word. This is the general principle. The general principle is that all the assets and liabilities which are appearing in the books of the acquiry company, you will have to record that. This is general principle and the important point is that such assets and liability will be recorded at fair value in the books of the acquirer. Is it clear to you? However, we were talking about some exceptions. There are some exceptions also. And I gave you one example with respect to the fact that there may be some items which may not be appearing in the books of what we call acquirer. Acquiry company, for example, contingent liability. They might have not recognized this liability because of the fact that probability of outflow of funds is not there. But herein, we will have to recognize this as a this as a liability. So it becomes an exception to recognition principle. It becomes an exception to recognition principle. Remember one thing: you will have to face and confront a lot of what we call MCQs also. So for that, such things you need to actually keep in your mind. Then second point, we talked about this particular fact that there may be some items which are appearing in the what we call balance sheet of acquiry company, correct? Assets and liabilities. The general rule is that we have to record them and we have to record them at, at what value we are supposed to record them. Please give me the answer now and very lovely good evening to Ravi Bajaj, Ajay Satpati, Vaseem Uddin, Ashok Das, VP Singh. Vipul Singh, Krishna Gaur, and uh, there might be many more, but uh, I'm not able to actually see them on the screen right now. Anyway, good good evening to everyone, those who are connected with us through YouTube and those who are connected with us through SAS system also. Correct? Uh, in the SAS system, actually, I'm not able to read the name, but there are three people right now from Jaipur, two from what we call Mumbai, uh, Ghatkopa, and another one is from Chennai, from Andhra Pradesh, from Vishakhapatnam. So it is nice to see all everyone attending these sessions. Anyway, Sam, a very fair value. Oh, sorry, fair value. I'm talking about you gave the answer. I'm sorry. And very lovely good evening to you, Pravesh. Gadyanwar, very lovely good evening once again. Everyone is telling me the right answer. Yes, the general rule is that whatever assets and liabilities which are appearing in the balance sheet will have to be recorded at fair value. But now, what is the exception here? T. Srupati Senapati, lovely good, lovely good evening. Now, the point here is that I told you in the last session, there are some items like share based payment. They might be appearing in the balance sheet of the acquiry company, correct? But we will have to record them not at fair value, rather in the light of India's 102, correct? So these are known as exception to measurement principle because we are not measuring them. We are not measuring them at what we call fair value is it clear to you similarly there might be some assets which which are meant for sale so such assets known as assets held for sale are recorded in the light of india's 105 and india's 5 you will study later on states that 
such assets should be recorded at fair value less cost of disposal and then regarding what we call reacquired right we might have given them some rights now because we have taken over the control of that particular enterprise now that means those rights have come back to us so such rights will be measured as per the remaining contractual terms correct till up to this particular stage i think we had finished in the last session now we will stress the discussion to some further limits i would love you to at the same time please pull out your pen pencil and be honest if you are going to be honest to yourself then surely i will see to it that you are going to come out with wonderful performance in the examination i can give you this sort of guarantee correct now after having noted down all these points remember one thing is still point number two is on under point number two we have talked about a b c and now i am writing point number d correct what is point number d now under point number d see here this is the balance sheet of let us say acquiry entity and we have taken acquiry entity as e2 correct right from the beginning of this particular chapter itself e2 Obviously, there are some assets and some liabilities in the books of acquiring company. And at some time, what happens? Sometime what happens? There might be some assets and liabilities which might not be what we call appearing over there. Might not be appearing over there due to some or other reasons. Correct? Due to some or other reasons, might not be appearing in the balance sheet of E two. And further. And further important point is that, in spite of the fact that those items are not appearing in the balance sheet of the acquiry company, we will record them, and we will not record them at fair value. For example, in the very first case, you remember, I told you about the contingent liability. Even this item was not appearing in the balance sheet of the acquiry company, but we are going to record it. But important thing is that we are going to record it at fair value. that mean that is why it is an exception to recognition principle and it is not an exception to what we call measurement principle but sometime there are some items which are not at all appearing in the books of what we call acquiry company in spite of that <coughs> we are going to record such assets or liabilities and we are not going to record them at fair value that is why these items will become what we call exception to both recognition principle and also measurement principle that is why they are known as an exception to recognition and measurement principle i hope you got the particular particular point you got the difference between the first one and this one in the first one contingent liability was also not appearing in the balance sheet but we will have to record them but we are going to record them at fair value because it was not recognized but we are recognizing that is why it is it becomes a case of what we call rec exception to recognition principle while in this particular case we are talking about exception to recognition and pre measurement principle because these items are not appearing over here number 1 we are recording them that is why they become what we call exception to recognition principle and we are not going to record them at fair value that is why they also become what we call exception to the measurement principle what are those items for example let me write the items also for example income taxes income taxes generally at your level you will not face this situation but still just to acquaint you now you may say sir income tax may be appearing in the balance sheet of acquiry company don't worry about this thing what i am talking about here income tax is actually here i am talking about deferred tax as asset or deferred tax liability later on you have in the s12 in your course then you are going to study at great length over there regarding these two concept deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability what happens actually as you know when we are going to take over the assets and liabilities of the acquiry company i have already told you we are going to record them at fair value now because of the changes in the value sometime what happens because of changes in the fair value now what happens We, it gives rise to what we call deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability obviously these assets are not recognized by acquiry company no doubt about that but we will have to we will have to recognize them because we are taking over all the assets and liability at fair value because of change in values it gives rise either to deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability so we will have to recognize income taxes number 1 and it will be recognized not at fair value it will not be recognized at fair value 
First of all, they haven't recognized it, but we will have to recognize it. That is why it is an exception to recognition principle. Further, we are not recognizing them, them at fair value. That is why it is also an exception to the measurement principle. Correct? We are going to recognize it as per India S12. As per India S12. Is it clear to you or not? Is this point is clear to everyone? Is it clear? Fine then. There might be some employee benefits. Employee benefits. In day S19. In day S19. What happens when we take over the control of the other enterprise? As I told you, because we record the assets and liabilities at fair value, it sometimes gives rise to what we call employee benefit liabilities. So we will have to recognize such employee benefits liabilities. And at what value we are going to recognize them, that value will be decided by end AS 19. Is it clear to you or not? So these are the things which you need to keep track of. One more item actually I am getting recapped. So I will also write like intangible assets, intangible assets, in Intangible assets. Intangible assets. <clears throat> you may say, sir, intangible assets generally appears in the books of every entity. No doubt about that. What I am trying to say, please listen to my point. Sometimes what happens <clears throat> when we take over the business of the other entity, suddenly we find actually that there is an item which is meeting the guidelines of NDS 38, whatever guidelines have been provided by NDS 38, it is meeting those guidelines. And this entity, this entity hasn't recognized that intangible asset, perhaps this entity might not be what we call following the NDS. It could be a possibility. It is an another entity. That entity might not be following NDS, so, it could be a possibility that they might have not recognized what we call that intangible asset. But, but, if there is, there is something which meets the definition or the guidelines of the NDS 38, NDS 38 as we know deals with intangible assets. So, under the situation of business combination, you will have to be careful when you are taking over the assets and liability and suddenly you come across over a particular fact, this particular item or this particular expenditure actually meets the definition or the criteria of the intangible assets. Is it clear to you? Then you will have to recognize that. That is the point which you need to understand. So intangible asset provided the meet the criteria, separability criteria of India S38, then you will have to recognize that. These three items becomes what we call, becomes uh, exception to recognition and measurement. Could you now tell me quickly, what is an exception to the recognition principle? Give me an example. Recognition principle, contingent liability. What are the what we call exceptions to measurement principles, share-based payment, asset held for sale and reacquired rights? And what are the exception to recognition and measurement principles, income tax liability, employee benefit expenses, and as I told you, what we call intangible assets. So these are the things which we have to take into account. Is it clear to you? This is your second step. So second step is pretty wider. Now under the third step, under the third step, the standard says that when you do the accounting, you will have to compute the NCI also. What we mean by NCI and how we are going to compute the value of the NCI, this is the another question, isn't it or not? So we have to compute the value of the NCI also. The standard says so. so. What we mean by this particular point, pay attention here. In order to make you understand this particular point, please also write along with me and be honest as I have already told you. So, in this particular case, we presume that there is an entity by the name of E1. Correct. Another entity, of course, I always take E1 and E2. Further, I presume that on this particular date, we got hold of 70% stakes in this particular entity. We are not going to get hold of what we call other entity. 70% shares we are purchasing. Obviously, we will have to churn out some money. Let us say in order to what we call purchase 70% share capital of E2, we have paid consideration of purchase consideration of 140 lakhs. 140 lakhs worth of purchase consideration we have paid. How much? 148 lakhs. I hope that each one of you are right. And let me also tell you, I have already uploaded the notes of business combination in my YouTube channel. You can download it 
till the time you receive the books we now already have the books also so soon we are going to supply all the books to each one of you those among you who have already paid for the same there are four sets of books now we are going to supply i will show you the four sets of books also these are the sets this is set number one correct this is set number one deals with practical chapters this is set number three in fact it deals with NDAs. I hope you are able to say it. And this is your set number two, volume two. It deals with theoretical chapters. Correct. Three sets already. And fourth set we have prepared. This is for MCQ. These are the four sets which you are going to receive. I would love you to those among you who haven't applied for the payment. Please go for it as soon as possible so that later on you should not be in any sort of trouble in comprehending the things. Correct. So, till the time you receive the books, you have the uh, now this luxury of downloading the notes. I have already uploaded the notes of business combination in Telegram channel. That is the point. Anyway, so E1 has acquired 70% stakes in E2 and our purchase consideration is 140. Further, we presume on this date, where is the scale actually? Let me pick up my scale. Scale is lying here. On this particular date, on the date of acquisition because on this particular date we got the control let us say on this particular date acquiry company acquiry company is having net assets and book value of net assets book value of net asset is 110 lakh and their fair value is 112 lakh their fair value is 112 lakh correct this is the information i delivered Actually, we are trying to find out as per step number three, because India states that we have to do calculations with respect to NCI. What we mean by this, actually the point is this, this is what we are trying to diagnose. Is it clear to you? So in order to understand this particular point, pay attention here. First of all, you need to understand that, you need to understand that non-controlling interest non-controlling interest we will see standard says that non-controlling interest can be measured can be measured either at proportionate share of net assets basis proportionate share of net assets basis in short form i have written psna correct proportionate share of net assets basis or what we call you can value NCI at fair value. Correct? Entity has this option. This option is given to the acquirer entity whether they want to compute the value of the NCI, either what we call through proportionate share of net assets basis or fair value. Generally, in practical life, the priority is given to fair value. In practical life, I'm talking about, and then it is given the what we call weightage. Generally, the priority is given to the fair value. If possible, you must compute NCI at fair value in practical life I am talking about. Correct? At your level, how we are going to proceed, I will let you know in a short while. So, in this question, let me compute the value of the NCI and what we mean by the value of NCI. Correct? Let us have a look over there. Suppose if I am going to ask you in this particular, I have a habit of asking, especially when I take the live classes. Correct? I have a habit of asking lots of questions. Now, you let me know. What is the amount of NIFA? Sir, what is this NIFA? First of all, please explain. NIFA means net identifiable assets of acquiry company. Who is the acquiry company? E2 is the acquiry company. What is the book value of net assets? That is 110. We are not concerned at all with this. Correct? So, we are not concerned with this. What we are concerned of with? We are concerned of with the fair value of the net assets on the date of acquisition because on this date we have got the control and on this date I have already told you net assets of subsidiary company or acquiry company is 110 and their fair value is 112. So the fair value of net assets is known as NIFA that is net identifiable assets of what we call acquiry company on the date of acquisition. Correct? Net identifiable asset of acquiry company that is E2 on the date of acquisition so whenever i would say what is the amount of nifa correct you must understand i'm asking you the amount of net identifiable assets of the acquiry company on the date of acquisition and their fair value and we have seen that net identifiable assets net identifiable assets were 112 actually i took 112 
So 112 were net identifiable asset. 112. So 112 is the net identifiable asset. Is it clear to you or not? Fine, sir. Now suppose I am going to ask you, please compute the value of the NCI as per proportionate share of net assets basis. Suppose if I am going to compute, then how I am going to compute? On the date of acquisition, net assets of subsidiary company is equal to 112 and out of that, out of that, NCI share NCI share will be how much? First of all, you let me know. If suppose you have got the control, how much control you have? 70% control. 70% of the share capital is in your hand. So quite obviously that means non-controlling interest holders are 30%, other shareholders. See here, when we say NCI, what we mean by that? Out of total share capital of E2, we have got 70% share. Quite obviously, it means 30% 30% of the shares are in the hands of the other shareholders, correct? And those other shareholders are known as non-controlling interest holders. Why they are known as non-controlling interest holder? Have you paid any attention to it ever? No. They are known as, the other shareholders are known as non-controlling interest holders because, because they are the shareholders of this entity. Quite obviously, they have got some interest in it, but they do not have the control in it. They have the interest, but they do not have the control. That is why they are known as, other shareholders are known as non-controlling interest holder. Is it clear to you? So now, when we say, or the standard says, on the date of acquisition, you have to determine NCI. What does it mean? It means a standard is asking you to compute the amount of net assets of the subsidiary company appearing on the date of acquisition at fair value out of that, how much actually net assets or how many net assets worth of belong to NCI? This is what we mean by NCI. Is it clear to you? So on the date of acquisition, we have seen that NIFA, as far as NIFA is concerned, I'm talking about NIFA. So net identifiable assets of the subsidiary company or the acquiry company on the date of acquisition is 112 and NCI share is 30%. So I will simply take 30% of 112. Now, for that, I will have to take the help of the calculator, correct? So, 112 into 30%, that comes to 33.6. Anyway, 33.60. So, out of 112 worth of assets, 33.60 worth of asset belong to NCI. On the date of acquisition, when I say NCI is 33.60, what does it mean? Now, as a professional student, you must understand it means that out of the total net identifiable assets of the acquiry company, 33.60 worth of net assets belong to actually NCI. Is it clear to you or not? If it is clear to you, it also means, just pay attention, it also means I am not only explaining the concept of NCI, I am doing something else also. Out of 112 worth of assets appearing on the date of acquisition of acquiry company, 33.60 belong to NCI. What about the remaining asset? Let me sub subtract 112. So remaining asset is equal to 78.4. Remaining asset is equal to 78.40. What does it mean? It means, it means actually that this is acquirer's share. Acquirer means E1 share. Acquirer's share. Acquirer share of net assets. Acquirer share of net assets in NIFA, net identifiable asset of E2, that is acquiry company, acquirer share of net assets, correct, in NIFA, NIFA of what? Of what we call acquiry company on the date of acquisition. You need not require to write so many words. You can simply write acquirer share. This is just to make you understand and comprehend better. I hope you got a bit of idea actually when we say NCI, the next step is NCI. What does it mean? It means on the date of acquisition, we have to find out what worth of net assets belong to actually other shareholders. And for that, you have two options. One, you can use PSNA method. When I will compute the NCI, in this manner, it is known as proportionate share of net assets. It is known as proportionate share of net assets. Is it clear to you? Because here we are simply taking the proportion 
of the net assets, 30% of 112. So it is known as proportionate share of net assets method. However, we can compute the NCI as I told you as per fair value also, as per fair value also. Suppose if I would have computed NCI as per fair value, as per fair value, how I would have computed? In this case, when you will compute the NCI as per fair value, in this case, you will have to look towards the consideration which you have paid to acquire the control. For example, in this particular case, in order to get 70% control, you have given 140 lakhs rupees. Is it clear to you? So, first of all, you will write here 70 per, for 70% amount paid is 140 lakhs. Suppose, just imagine for a while, as an investor, you are investing in some other entity. Correct? As an investor, you are investing in some other entity and you are going to buy 70% of the stakes of the other entity. Now, other entity are other entities not going to sell you simply at what we call carrying value of their share capital. They will take into account the fair value of their shares. So generally, when we say that we are paying 140 lakhs, 100 lakh, 120 lakh to acquire the control, it always means that you are paying this amount on the basis of the fair value of the shares. Is it clear to you or not? Is this point is clear to everyone? Please let me know of that. When I say that as an investor, I am going to invest in some other entity, obviously the other entity will also insist upon this particular fact that we should consider the market value, fair values and accordingly you will have to churn out the money. Is it clear to you? So that means 140 lakhs worth of consideration which we have paid to acquire the control, it is based upon the fair value. Is it clear to you? So for 70%, if, if the fair value is 140, so now you can construe this one as follows. For 70%, you are paying what we call 140 lakhs. If you would have acquired 30%, 30% is the what we call NCI interest, correct? So for 30%, what value you would have churned out? That is 140 into 30 divided by 70. Now, 140 into 30 divided by 70. That comes to, according to my calculation, it's a pretty high figure, no problem at all. This time NCI is 60 lakhs. Now suppose I'm going to ask you on the date of acquisition, on the date of acquisition, what is the NIFA? Net identifiable asset, the net identifiable asset of acquiry company on the date of acquisition we have already seen is equal to 112 and out of 112 this time because we have computed NCI on the basis of the fair value so that means 60 lakhs worth of assets 60 lakhs worth of asset out of 112 it will be presumed belong to NCI correct only the remaining amount now what is the remaining amount in this particular case remaining amount i think will be equal to 62 so in this case acquirer share acquirer share will be equal to 62 however we will see later on and i will prove to you that ultimately whether you are going to whether you are going to value nci either at proportionate share of net assets basis or what we call at fair value, ultimately it is not going to have any what we call effect or impact. At this moment, you might be wondering, sir, in this case, NC, NCI value is quite high in comparison to the value of this one. You might be wondering in this manner, isn't it or not? I'm very sure about that. But as I will prove it after some time that ultimately it is not going to have any effect. So there are two options available with respect to calculation of the NCI. Now, the last step, under the last step, standard says that when you do the accounting, when you do the accounting, as somebody told me it is 52. Thank you, Sam. It is 52. Okay, whatever figure it is. So I hope now you got this conceptuality absolutely clear with respect to NCI. Now we come across over the next point. The next point deals with computation of computation of standard says that on the date of acquisition, acquirer company must compute goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Computation of goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. 
gain on bargain purchase. Some small question definitely are going to strike in the examination out of this particular topic. Computation of goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Gain on bargain purchase, it is a pretty long term. Gain on bargain purchase. So I will use the short form GOBP. Gain on bargain purchase. Correct. Henceforth, I will use this abbreviation for gain on bargain purchase. Well, in order to compute the gain on bargain purchase, it is very simple. In fact, you have already learned that. Now I will tell you. In order to compute the gain on bargain purchase, all what you have to do is simply, first of all, you will take into account the NIFA. And you know the meaning of NIFA now. Whenever I am going to use the word NIFA, what does it mean? It means net identifiable assets of acquiry company, of acquiry company on the date of acquisition. On the date of acquisition on the date of acquisition, of course, DFA will always be considered at fair value. Is it clear to you? First of all, you will have to find out the NIFA and it will, well, it will always be available in the question. Out of that, all you have to do is to pluck out the share of NCI, correct? As I did earlier. In order to come do the computation with respect to what we call goodwill or gain on bargain purchase, what you have to do, simply take into account the NIFA on the date of acquisition and then you find out the NCI. You can find out the NCI as per the directions given in the question or as per your own will or discretion. You can compute NCI either through what we call PSNA basis or through fair value basis. But generally the direction is given in the question. Anyway, whatever methodology you apply, you will compute the NCI value. Once you have the NCI value, remember one thing, never ever commit this mistake of computing directly acquirer share directly acquire a share otherwise it could land you in trouble is it clear to you once you have the nci value then you deduct this value from the nifa and then you find the remaining net asset as acquirer share now whatever remaining assets will be there will be known as acquirer share of net assets acquirers acquirers share of net assets In acquiry company, in acquiry company, on the date of acquisition, on the date of acquisition, is it clear to you? So whatever remaining assets will be there, that means this much of asset actually belong to acquirer company. Now you are going to compare this value with this value with the consideration which you have paid consideration now you are going to compare this value with the consideration you might have paid some consideration so you must have paid some consideration not might have you must have paid some considerations it means that by paying this much of consideration on the date of acquisition you are getting hold of this much of asset so you are going to compare this if the consideration amount is higher if the consideration amount is higher then the difference will be if consideration amount is higher remember one thing then it will be equal to goodwill if consideration is more if consideration is more is consideration is more than the share of net assets share of net assets then it will be goodwill in the reverse situation there could be gain on bargain purchase is it clear to you or not very easy to compute it now after having taken care of all these things now we are in a position to take a step towards something else and pay attention here here i have kept the notes with me and if you have the notes the problem is that i'm not very sure whether you are having the books or notes right now or not but anyway i would insist upon you kindly kindly when when we meet in the next session at least you should have the notes so that uh, you should not have any difficulty otherwise without that
Anyway, now we start with first section. I've already told you we have divided the entire section, entire chapter into 24, 23 or 24 sections. And this is the first section. In this particular section, as you can see, we have kept questions related to computation or of goodwill or non-controlling interest or gain on bargain purchase. Correct. Now we are picking up question number one to start the proceeding. Here it states that FX Limited acquires 100% of MX Limited. Kindly tell me who is the acquirer company. The acquirer company is FX Limited. And in this case, which company tends, uh, which company is acquiry company MX Limited? How many shares you are getting? 100% of the share capital. So what is the NCI, sir? NCI is zero. So in this case, NCI is zero. Correct? So because entire share capital is in our hand. And in order to get 100% share, how much we paid? We paid 9,60,000. Further, it is given fair value of acquiry company MX at the time of acquisition is 8 lakh. The day on which we acquired the control, on that particular date, the net assets, net assets of subsidiary company, net assets of subsidiary company were appearing at a fair value of rupees 8 lakh. In this case, as I told you, you are supposed to calculate the goodwill and you are supposed to pass the entries. You can do it very easily of your own, but just because I do not want to take the risk, I have a habit of what we call, hmm, where is the space? Well, I will solve it for you. Don't worry about it. All this question is given in a solved manner, but I would love you to still keep on writing with me. Correct? Now, in this particular case, in this particular case, first of all, we are supposed to compute the amount of goodwill. Now, please quickly tell me how I am going to compute the amount of goodwill. First of all, what I am supposed to do, I am taking into account NIFA. When I say NIFA, it means net identifiable assets of acquiry company on the date of acquisition at fair value. I'm not writing completely, but I'm simply writing NIFA. Now, we have already seen that 8 lakh is the value. So, I'm going to write here 8 lakhs. Correct? Out of 8 lakh worth of NIFA, all I want to know now, what is NCI share? Correct? Sir, in this question, there is no need for NCI. Right you are. Absolutely right. In this case, there is no NCI. But still, just to make the point a little bit clear, NCI is zero in this case. Why? Because NCI is not having what we call any percentage of shares. Entire share capital is in our hand. So whatever remaining assets are there, quite obviously remaining assets are 8 lakh now. So that means acquirer share. Acquirer share will be how much? Acquirer share. Acquirer share of NIFA will be equal to 8 lakhs entire what we call amount of NIFA will belong to in this particular case acquirer. So that means on the date of acquisition when we got hold of what we call other entity we got 8 lakh worth of net assets but how much amount we paid for the same we paid 9 lakh 60 thousand. So I just told you a moment ago now all I have to do is to now simply compare it with the consideration. So consideration Consideration amount, as we can see, is 9,60,000. Now, you tell me the consideration amount is more or less. So, consideration amount is actually higher. So, now you tell me, should I write here gain on bargain purchase or goodwill? Sir, you must write goodwill. So, goodwill is equal to how much? That is equal to 1,60,000. In this case, amount of goodwill will be equal to 160. Very simple. Is it clear to you? Question has also asked us to pass an entry. Suppose if I am going to ask you in the books of acquirer, what entry you are going to pass? What entry you are going to pass? First of all, you have to think very coolly what you are getting. I mean to say in this particular case, it is given that net assets of acquiry company appearing on the date of acquisition is 8 lakh. Quite obviously, first of all, you are going to record those assets because net assets are given. So I will simply write NIFA net identifiable asset account debit 8 lakh. This is the fair value because we have to record the things at fair value 8 lakh. Hmm. Generally, when we have written here net, it means we have included assets and liability both. Generally, after writing this, generally from next time, you must write here to NCI. 
in this question there is no NCI, but had it been there, I would have written 2 NCI. Is it clear to you or not? By writing the NCI on the credit side, it means I am subtracting the NCI share from this particular amount. Is it clear to you? But in this question, there is no NCI. Now we are going to write here regarding the consideration. Now, as a professional student, you should not give any chance to the examiner, examiner to deduct your single mark. For example, once again, I would take you to the question. Just pay attention why I am stressing upon even for a, such a low intensity question. Here it is written FX Limited acquired 100% of MX Limited for Rs. 9,60,000. Whenever the wordings will be like this, for rupees nine lakh sixty thousand, always presume that you have delivered the consideration in cash. Is it clear to you? That means from next time you will have to keep an eye whether the purchase consideration is delivered by the acquirer entity, what we call through cash or by way of share capital. That is the point actually. These are the minor things which I would love you to pay attention to, and that is the reason actually why I'm doing this particular question. So now we will have to write here. What? What should I write? Should I write to share capital or to cash? And in case if you get confused, you can simply write consideration at least. Is it clear to you? In bracket, I am writing consideration. So this is the amount of consideration which we are paying 9,60,000. 9,60,000. Even through this particular entry, we can derive this figure. By taking the difference, we will again get what we call goodwill that is equal to 1,60,000. Is it clear to you? Now, we pick up second question. In question number 1.2, what is given to us? In 1.2, it is given that on 31st of March 2023, K9 Limited, this time K9 Limited is the acquirer entity, it acquired L5 Limited. L5 Limited happens to be your acquiry entity. K Limited issued 60,000 shares. How many shares we have issued? 60,000 shares. It means this time you are delivering the purchase consideration by way of shares. Correct? So, K Limited issued 60,000 shares of rupees 10 each at par value. The par value of 60,000 shares, 60,000 into 10 is 6 lakh. But that were trading in the market at 240. That means you are issuing 60,000 shares. We are, in this particular case, we are issuing 60,000 share at the rate of 240 indirectly it means is it clear to you because it is given the par value is 10 quite obviously it means 230 is the premium very high premium anyway so point you need to note is that your consideration amount will be equal to 60,000 into 240 is it clear to you or not now further it is given book value book value pay attention book value of acquiry company's net assets was 72 lakh this line is irrelevant for us because we are concerned with the fair value it is given that the fair value of the net assets was assessed at 135 lakh in this case fair value is 135 lakh now quickly without looking at any without looking at this solution quickly within a flick of second let me see who gives me the answer now please tell me what is the stake of, what is the stake of acquirer company in the acquiry company in this question? In the last question, it was given that we acquired 100% control. Now, I would like, love you to actually give me the answer. What is the proportion of our, what we call interest in the acquiry entity? 80%, 90%, 70%. Question looks very innocuous, no doubt about that. Very innocuous question, very innocuous uh, uh, means actually very simple sort of question, correct? Very innocent question. Let me have the answer. First answer came from Ashok Das, 100%. So, very correct answer, absolutely. If in the question, pay attention, actually these are the things student fraternity never pays any attention to and in the examination, they are necessarily waste their time. Whenever in the question, percentage will not be given without an iota of doubt and without any hitch and hitch, you have to come to the conclusion that you have got 100% stakes. So even in this question, 100% of the stakes are in the hands of what we call, correct? Right, right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. You are right, absolutely. So, in this question, 
Suppose if I am going to ask you again the same question, how you are going to compute the amount of goodwill because question has, question is simply telling pass the entry under India's 103, but just to practice a way bit, NIFA, first of all, and I have given you very simple steps of computing goodwill, NIFA, it means net identifiable asset at fair value of acquiry company, of acquiry company on the date of acquisition. On the date of acquisition, it is equal to 135 lakh. So first of all, you will write this value, 135 lakh in this case. Is it clear? Now, all you have to do is to divide it NCI. It is not necessary, but just to keep the approach intact. Obviously, because no question of NCI in this question, so nothing will belong to NCI. Everything will become belong to parent, 135 lakhs. 135 lakhs. Everything will belong to parent company. This is acquirer share acquirer share now you will have to compare it with the amount of consideration what is the amount of consideration in this particular case in order to know the amount of consideration you will have to multiply it 60000 with what was the amount given to us 240 so 60000 into 240 will be equal to 144 lakhs will be equal to 144 lakhs Again, your consideration amount is exceeding the what we call your share. So quite obviously, again this time you are going to have goodwill and goodwill will be worth rupees 9 lakh. Goodwill will be worth rupees 9 lakh. Is it clear to you? Suppose if I am going to ask you what will be the entry, you can pass the entry in this manner. Here it is written. First of all, you will have to write the net identifiable asset 135 lakhs. Then see here what I have written to capital. If you ever get confused that should you write cash or capital, at least for God's sake, write consideration payable. Is it clear to you? Otherwise, if you can write it in this manner, that's fine. So capital, what will be the amount of capital? 60,000 share into 10, 6 lakh. And what will be the amount of premium? Instead of writing premium, you can also write additional capital account. Many among us actually do not know this. Premium is also known as additional capital. Correct? So this is the point. What will be the amount of premium? 60,000 into 230, that is equal to 138 lakh. If there would have been NCI, I would have written 2 NCI also. NCI is not there, so 9 lakh will be your goodwill. Goodwill can be ex ex extracted even through this particular entry. 1.3, let's have a look over it. In 1.3, it is stated that A Limited acquires 80% of B Limited for rupees 9 lakh 60,000. Now, in this question, A Limited acquired 80% stakes in B Limited and they paid a consideration of 9,60,000, correct? And this consideration was paid by equity. However, equity share capital was issued at par. Now it is given that fair value of B's net assets at the time of acquisition amounted to 8 lakh. Question is not very tough, but at the same time, let's have a look. Calculate non-controlling interest and goodwill. Question states first and then journal entries in the books of A Limited. To this particular question, actually, I just want to explain two, three points. And that is the reason, actually, I am picking up this question. Just let me create a bit of a space for me so that it becomes easier for me and for you too also. Now, I will rub it out. Mm -hmm. What happens? Sometimes this pen creates problem. Okay little bit of space I have created. Now my first point to you, what is the amount of NIFA? Whenever we say NIFA, it means net identifiable assets of acquiry company on the date of acquisition at fair value. It is clearly given in the question 8 lakh. Some of you might be wondering actually why I am doing this question. You can manage it of your own no doubt about that you can manage it of your own very easily but if i am doing there must be a reason behind that now pay attention now i would love you to compute the amount of nci how will you compute we are supposed to compute nci because in this question it is not clearly mentioned should we go for psna method that means there is no direction in the question is there any direction in the question there is no direction in the question that NCI need to be computed either at PSNA basis or what we call on the basis of fair value. Now, in that case, you have the option. 
correct whether you want to use psna method or you want to use psna a uh, fair value method and append a note whatever methodology you have adopted let us say i adopt psna approach psna approach under proportionate share of net assets method we simply take the percentage of nci which must be 20 percent because 80 percent shares are in our hand isn't it or not 20 percent and we will take 20 percent of 8 lakh 20% of 8 lakh, it means out of net identifiable assets of 8 lakh, 1 lakh 60,000 worth of net identifiable asset belong to NCI as per this particular approach. Now, acquirer share, what will be the acquirer share? A share, A is the acquirer company, A share of net asset. So, A share of net asset will be equal to how much if I am going to deduct the same debt will be equal to 6,40,000. In order to compute the goodwill, pay attention actually, I am going to explain something else in this question also. Ultimately, I will have to compare this amount with the amount of consideration I have told you now on several occasions. Consideration, what is the amount of consideration? in this particular case in this particular case we acquired 80 percent control by paying 9 lakh 60 thousand rupees isn't it or not so i am going to here write 9 lakh 60 thousand now you tell me whether there is goodwill or gain on bargain purchase because consideration is more so we are still having goodwill we are still having goodwill correct suppose suppose if i would have had used what we call instead of PSNA method, let us say if I would have had used fair value methodology. In that case, what would have been the scenario? That means whenever we are going to compute NCI at PSNA basis, in that case, obviously, there will be some amount of goodwill. And when we are going to compute NCI on fair value basis, again, there will be some amount of goodwill, but obviously, the amount of goodwill will not match. But now I will try to prove you, as I told you earlier, even though NCI can be measured either at PSNA or what we call on fair value basis, but ultimate effect will remain same. I will prove that in a short while, but just pay attention. Let us say same question I am solving now taking what we call NCI at fair value. So in order to consider NCI, again, I write NIFA. Amount of NIFA was net identifiable as it was 8 lakh. 8 lakh. So I will write here 8 lakh. Then I am going to write NCI and I will have to compute NCI at fair value in this case because I want to compute NCI at fair value. In order to compute the NCI at fair value, what I am supposed to do? For 80%, we are paying 9,60,000, isn't it or not? For 80%, we are making a payment of 9,60,000, correct? So now I will take 20%. So, what will be the value of 20%? That is equal to 20 into 9,60,000 divided by 80. So, how much it will be? I think it will be equal to 240, 960 divided by 4. Yes, it comes to 2,40,000. So, in this case, out of Total assets, total net assets on the date of acquisition at fair value, 8 lakh. Out of total assets of 8 lakh, 2 lakh, 40,000 worth of asset belong to NCI. Is it clear to you? Now, in this case, in this case, whatever remaining assets are there, whatever remaining assets are there. So, I will subtract 240 from 8 lakh. If I am going to subtract 240 from 8 lakh, so what will be the value? From 8 lakh, I think it is equal to 5 lakh 60,000 if I am not wrong. Please see to it. Please check it. So, this will be acquirer share. Acquirer share in this particular case will be equal to this much. Let me also check. 800 minus 240, that is 560. Okay, now consideration. Consideration is 9 lakh 60,000. In this case, you can see the amount of goodwill is actually 4 lakh. In this case, amount of goodwill is 4 lakh. Correct? Till up to this particular stage, things are things should be clear. That being, a standard actually allows an option to the entities 
that it is entirely purely the discretion of the directors of the acquirer entity whether they intend to value the NCI on PSNA basis or at fair value basis. Obviously, if they are going to adopt PSNA basis, amount of good will be there, but it will differ if we would have computed the amount of goodwill by considering NCI at what we call fair value as is happening in this particular case. We can see in this particular case amount of goodwill when we compute it on PSNA basis NCI share is 320 while in this case it is 4 lakh. But I also told you it is not going to have any impact later on. How and why I am saying so? Please pay attention. See here what will happen what will happen later on ultimately why we are doing all these things on the date of acquisition? The ultimate aim is that we have to prepare the consolidated financial statement. So later on, on the date of acquisition, when I am going to prepare the consolidated financial statement, pay attention here. When I am going to prepare the consolidated financial statement, now you tell me what amount of goodwill I will write here if I have computed NCI on PSNA basis. If I have computed NCI on PSNA basis, Obviously, the amount of goodwill is 3,20,000 and I am going to reflect this goodwill over here, 3,20,000, correct? And NCI share is 160 and NCI is reflected towards the liability side, 1,60,000. However, it is written under you know, what we call other equity item, but as a separate line item. Anyway, I do not want to confuse you at this moment. At this moment, you simply focus over here that whatever goodwill we got, we are ultimately going to reflect it in the consolidated financial statement and NCI share will also be reflected over here. Now pay attention. Whenever goodwill, which we arrived at by taking PSNA, by taking NCI at PSNA, in such a situation, this goodwill, this goodwill, is also known as proportionate goodwill. This goodwill which is appearing in the balance sheet is also known as proportionate goodwill. What does it mean proportionate goodwill or partial goodwill? It is also known as partial goodwill. Partial or proportionate goodwill. And what does it mean? It means, it means, what does it mean? It means this goodwill belongs to acquirer only. This goodwill belongs to acquirer only. That means this amount of goodwill belongs to acquirer only. In this goodwill, there is no share of NCI. Is it clear to you? Whenever NCI is computed at PSNA basis, amount of goodwill which gets reflected in the cons consolidated financial statement, it reflects the partial or proportionate share indirectly. It means it shows the share of acquirer only, share of parent only. Is it clear to you or not? Please quickly tell me. If it is clear to you, please quickly tell me then. Is it clear to you or not? First of all, please let me know and let me know honestly. Then only I will proceed. Right. Wasim says clear. What about else? I hope you got this particular point. I am trying to prove that even though whatever approach we adopt to compute NCI, ultimately it is not going to have any impact. Any impact. I will tell you now. Thanks, Mahesh also and Ashok also. Now everyone has given me the reply, Sruti. Sruti Senapati, I hope I have pronounced correctly and uh, you are Shri Varshani. Fine. Now just have a look over here. In this case, in case number B, when we computed NCI at fair value. In this case, later on when I am going to prepare my consolidated financial statement, now you let me know what amount of goodwill I am going to reflect. I am going to reflect amount of goodwill. Obviously, the amount of goodwill was 4 lakhs. So, I will have to reflect the goodwill amount at 4 lakh only. No doubt about that. I am going to reflect it at 4 lakh. Correct? And then I am going to write NCI also. Now, in this case, NCI share is 2 lakh 40,000. So, 2 lakh 40,000. In this case, 
in this particular case, goodwill which is appearing in the balance sheet is known as full value of goodwill. It is known as full value of goodwill. This is full cost method of goodwill also. Suppose if a particular question says to you, compute the amount of goodwill on full cost basis. Immediately, it must strike to you that in this case, you will have to compute the NCI at fair value. Because goodwill you cannot get at full cost unless you are going to compute the NCIE at fair value. Is it clear to you or not? So that is why these terms you must be aware of. For example, a particular question may ask you to compute the amount of goodwill on proportionate basis. Compute the partial amount of goodwill. Indirectly, it means you have to take NCIE at PSNA basis. That is why you need to be very well acquainted with all this particular term. Anyway, this is known as full cost of goodwill or full value of goodwill. And when we say full value of goodwill, indirectly what we are trying to say that in this goodwill, in this goodwill, both the parties are having some stakes. Both the parties, who are the parties? One acquirer having 80% stakes and NCI having 20% stakes. Now, suppose if I take 80% of 4 lakh, you can see in this case, Still, the share of acquirer is 3,20,000. Still, the share of acquirer is 3,20,000. Are you getting my point or not? So, try to understand. Even though a standard says that entity has the option to compute NCI either at what we call PSNA or on fair value basis, but ultimately, it is not going to actually impact the financial statement, provided you have the knowledge to diagnose the what we call financial statement. Is it clear to you or not? Did you like all these things or not? Fine. It is nice to, nice to see you. Now we have 1.4. 1.4. In this particular question, it is given Jet Limited acquired 60% interest in P Limited on 1st of January 2023. How much interest? 60% interest. Jet Limited paid 700 lakh in cash for their interest in P Limited. The fair value of P limited asset is 1,800 lakhs. This time fair value of assets and liabilities are given separately. Although it is not going to have any effect, that means 1,800 minus 900, that is total net assets will be equal to 900. Correct? Question says that, provide the general entry for the acquisition using NDS, assuming that P limited does not wish to, does not wish to report the NCI at fair value. Now, in this question, question is absolutely clear that entity is not interested in computing the NCI at fair value. So, indirectly, it means you will have to compute the NCI at PSNA basis. Is it clear to you? Now, I am not solving this question. You can easily do this question. All you have to do is, if you want to have a good presentation, you can move in this manner. Say here, first of all, you will write NIFA. And if you can write in this manner, 100% of fair value of net identifiable asset. 100% of fair value of net identifiable asset. Fair value of asset is 1,800. Fair value of liability is 900. So quite obviously, assets minus liability will deliver you net assets, that is net identifiable assets. So on the date of acquisition, net identifiable asset is 900 lakhs. Correct? Further, in this case, we have to compute NCI on proportionate share of net assets basis. Because 60% stakes have been held by the parent entity, quite obviously, NCI share will be 40%. You take 40% of 900. So out of 900, we may say 360 worth of net asset belong to NCI. This is also the value of NCI on the date of acquisition. Is it clear to you? And then I am going to subtract. Sorry, by subtracting 360 from 900, we get 540. This 540 simply reflects share of acquirer in net identifiable assets on the date of acquisition. Then we have to compare it with the amount of consideration. The consideration amount is 700 lakh. And again, in this case, you can see the consideration is exceeding what we call uh, your net assets. So quite obviously, that when you have paid more and you received less, let, that is why it is goodwill. So goodwill will be equal to 160. Now suppose in this question, just to understand you a little bit better, even though question is not asking, suppose I say 
if you would have computed the value of NCI on fair value basis, let us say. If you would have computed NCI on fair value basis, how you would have computed? You would have computed in this manner, for 60% we are paying 700 rupees for consideration. So how much we would have paid for 40%? 40% is NCI share, correct? So that is 40 into 700 divided by 60%. And that will be equal to 467. So in this case, NCI value would have been 467. Now in this case, what would have been the amount of goodwill? Let's have a look over here. 100% of net identifiable asset is 900 as we know. Out of that, we are going to subtract the NCI because we have taken NCI now at fair value. I will subtract 467. So 433 worth of assets are now remaining. So share of acquirer in the net identifiable asset will be equal to 433 and obviously the consideration which we have paid is equal to 700 and amount of goodwill will be equal to 267. Suppose in this case if I ask you to pass the entry, see there is a way to pass the entry also. Always first of all if assets and liabilities are given in this question assets and liabilities are given in a segregated manner. It is better to first of all write identifiable asset. Don't directly write net assets because in this case fair value of asset and fair value of liabilities are given separately. So you are going to first of all write identifiable asset 1800 and then you are going to write identifiable liability 900. That means when I, I will write 1800 and 900 indirectly it means I have so far recorded net identifiable asset to the extent of 1800 minus 900, 900, correct? After writing these two things, then you must write NCI. It is always better to write NCI first. Is it clear? To NCI 467. That means when I am writing 467 here, correct? Suppose so far I have written these three items, assets, liability and NCI. Indirectly, it means I have written only this much of amount 433. Indirectly, it means I have written this amount. And what is this amount? It shows the parent share of net assets, isn't it or not? And then you write consideration because you are delivering the consideration by way of shares, you better write to capital 700. So now, when we are writing two capital indirectly, it means I am comparing what we call these two items. And so, that is why the balancing figure will be goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Is it clear to you or not? Absolutely clear. If it is clear to you, now we will take 1.5 also. What does 1.5 states? On 1st of January 2023, pay attention here. On 1st of January 2023, M Limited acquires 80% of equity interest in P Limited in exchange of Rs. 250. What does it mean? It means you have got 80% interest. You have got 80% interest. And how much amount did you pay for the same? 250. Correct? And you paid that in cash. Net identifiable assets are measured at 350 and liabilities are measured at 50. That means net assets on the date of acquisition 350 minus 50 will be equal to 400. But further it is given the fair value of 20% non-controlling interest is 43. What happens? I have seen on many equations. I have seen on many occasions during my three decades of experience that sometime a student in the heat and anxiety of the examination, never go through the entire length and breadth of the question and in the harakari, they commit some mistake. What I mean to say here, for example, in this particular question, we know that we have got 80% interest and NCI interest is also 20% and here it is written the fair value of 20%. What the student actually presumes that we they have to actually find the NCI at fair value without going further. Actually, the value is already given to you. It is given that fair value of 20% non-controlling interest is 43. So you need not require to do anything in this particular case because fair value of NCI is already available. There is no point in actually unnecessarily computing the fair value of NCI in this case. So you can easily manage this question of your own. 
amount of net identifiable asset 350 minus 50 will be equal to 300 and ci value on the basis of fair values given to you already 43 so whatever balance is there that belongs to acquirer compare it with the what we call consideration in this case and this is the first question in this case we come across here that consideration amount is 250 while net assets which we are getting is equal to 257 so it is a gain to us it is known as gain on bargain purchase and just for your knowledge sake just for your knowledge sake actually in practical life to be very very honest with you gain on bargain purchase can never ever arise what i said in practical life correct in reality in substance gain on bargain purchase can never ever arise I will just prove it within a flick of second. Suppose you have a business, correct? And net assets, that is assets minus liability, net assets of your business is equal to 1000 lakhs. And we presume you are a very prudent business, correct? That means whatever you do, you always think before that, before leaping into the conclusion. Suppose today I want to buy your business. Would you be ready to actually accept any figure less than 1000? Because in that case, you will incur a loss. The value of your business net assets is equal to 1000. Quite obviously, being a prudent businessman and of highly high amount of wisdom, you are not going to actually accept anything less than 1000. You will insist upon definitely a figure more than 1000, but definitely you are not going to sell your business at a figure below than this. That is why I am telling in practical life, in practical life, generally, generally we do not have concept of gain on bargain purchase now you may say actually sir if there is no concept of gain on bargain purchase why india 103 is talking about gain on purchase this is the most relevant and pertinent question i tell you i told you first that in reality under normal circumstances gain on bargain purchase can never arise however under rare circumstances it could arise now i am redefining my words under rare circumstances, gain on bargain purchase arise. As a professional student, you need to know what are those circumstances. For example, let us say there is an Indian company. There is an Indian company. This Indian company is operating in UK. This Indian company is operating in UK. Are you getting my point or not? Let us say because of some political situation or political turmoil in UK, correct? What happened? Their competition, competition commission has decided. Competition commission basically means is a commission actually which governs the affairs of the corporate sector. In almost every country, there is a co competition so that competition can be made fairly. Correct. Anyway, the, let us say the competition commission of UK has decided that all the foreign foreign companies must leave the UK within next one year. Suddenly, they came out with this dictate that you will have to leave the UK territories within one year. Now, it's a big Indian company operating in UK, but because of this particular dictate, they will have to now leave the UK shows. Now, you tell me, quite obviously, in this particular case, this particular entity will be under a sort of force will be under a sort of foundation under some pressure so they will have to sell their business and in this particular case they might agree to sell their business at a value lesser than the what we call fair value of their net assets so in that case gain on bargain purchase could arise extended not only stops here extended also says that in case if an entity gets gain on bargain purchase in practical life they must do a thorough re rechecking whether there is gain on bargain purchase or not this is just for knowledge sake but point is that this knowledge will hold you in a very good state you remember me and you will remember me no doubt about that i'm very sure that whatever i'm telling you something extra definitely out of that 80 percent i'm not telling 50 percent 10 percent 80 or 90 percent you will face in your interviews correct that is the reason actually i keep on telling to you anyway i think i have solved this question okay 1.6 just have a look over here in 1.6 what we are getting on 1st of january 2023 hansa limited acquired 70 percent of the equity interest in nanital orchards limited nanital orchards limited 
in exchange of consideration of 700 lakhs. Again, it is given identifiable assets are measured at 1,500 and liabilities are 600. So you can manage this question. In this question, we have to compute NCI at fair value and goodwill. And we have to compute NCI on proportionate share of net assets basis and also the goodwill. So in simple words, question is asking you to compute. First of all, you have acquired 70% stakes in this particular case, number one. Number two, you have paid 700 lakh rupees. And number three, the net assets on the date of acquisition is equal to 500 minus 1,500, that is 900. So suppose, now first point here, NCI on fair value basis. Let us say we are computing NCI on fair value basis. In that case, what will be our amount of goodwill? First of all, here I write net assets. 1500 minus 600. Now I will compute the fair value of the NCI. You know now how to compute. Correct? NCI, because we have paid a consideration of rupees for 70%, for 70%, we have paid, just wait, for 70%, we have paid 700 rupees and NCI share is 30%. So what will be NCI at fair value? Obviously, in this case, it will be equal to 300. Correct? 300. So you can easily find out fair value of NCI that is 300 rupees. By subtracting this figure, you will get acquired share 600 and you will compare it with the amount of consideration which you have paid. So you have paid 700 and acquired share of net asset is equal to 600. In this case, there will be goodwill. So in this case, when NCI is measured at fair value, we are getting a goodwill of 100. And you can pass the entry. I told you best way of passing the entry first, write the asset, then write the liability. That means you have now so far written net assets, compare it with the NCI and then write the consideration, then better write the amount of goodwill. In second case, if you would have adopted proportionate share of net assets basis, in that particular case, NCI share would have been 270 because total net assets 1500 minus 600, 900, 900 into 30%, 270 would have been the share of NCI under PSNA basis. Then you can easily find out the amount of goodwill. See net asset is 900, NCI share is 270. So remaining asset means share of acquirer in the net assets of acquiry will be 630. And you will compare it with the amount of consideration 700 lakhs. So in this case, your goodwill would have been 70. Now quickly tell me, this goodwill ultimately I am going to reflect in the consolidated financial statement. By what name it is known as? Of course, I will write goodwill, but what else actually it is known as? I told you earlier, this 70 lakh now which will appear in the consolidated financial statement, what will you call it? Will you call it full value of the goodwill or partial value of the goodwill? It will be partial value of the goodwill, correct? Just for your knowledge sake. Actually, problem is this, I can continue further. But problem is that I do not know how many among you are having the notes. Please let me know how many among you are having the notes. One, two, three, no, you are giving me the answer. Now, my next question is how many of you are having the notes or the books? See, now, last year, what happened when we started the course in Hindi version? Correct? Within one month, entire stock of books actually was finished. Within one month. And after that, we had to ultimately reject the offers. That is why I am simply telling that immediate, immediately those among you who haven't bought the books or haven't bought the material, kindly, kindly for God's sake, because every day, because I have the time to move over to the even what we call next step, the next section, but I am refraining myself from that. So, Krishna God, you have the notes from the telegram, no doubt about that, but I would love you to buy this latest versions. So that is very important for you. It is not costing very high amount, whatever amount which we have already said in the class, same amount is there. So it is better actually, you go for these notes so that next time when I meet you, I'm in a position to start a very heavy topic. Of course, I will finish these questions also, and then we will move over to the next topic that is common control, demerger, spin-offs or sale of division. That is the point actually I just wanted to tell. I am refraining myself from what we call moving over to the other idea. Correct? 
you try to those among you who have got the notes try to do the remaining question although i am going to do it in the next session correct so for the day i'm finishing it five minutes earlier than the what we call time allotted because still up to 10 we have kept the time but in spite of that actually i last time i'm trying to actually tell you ashok das told me please explain how could i bought this book it is as simple as that. So many times I keep on telling everything is written in the what we call description box. Go to the description box. Simply what we call uh, call back or send your request in WhatsApp. The, the number is already given to you. You simply say that I am interested in buying the book. Please give me the details. Details will be provided to you. I have already told you because when we will send this book even at least seven to eight days actually encompasses before the book reaches in your hand that is why i am telling you please do it at the earliest possible and by the time and later on we will not be responsible this is the final announcement which we are making because later on we will not be responsible for this particular fact that we are not in a position now to give you any book because i am very sure that the number of copies which we have already published will get exhausted very soon uh, as per the rush, as per the response which we are having for this particular course. And this is the genuinely one of the best possible course in your hand. I hope that some of you would agree. Is it an arrogant remark or is it a reality? Please let me know of that. When I say, and I'm telling you with great honesty, honesty is very important thing. You have to be very, very honest in whatever things you do in your real life. We take lots of pain to give you the best and I am now flooded up with what we call request from the Hindi version students. Um, let me assure them also that we are going to come up with, so very soon, we are going to make an announcement regarding that also. So you need not require to worry on that particular count. This English version course will move on and you have two days of time to get the books or the notes. In the meantime, at least apply for the books and notes we have already uploaded. So kindly see to it, kindly see to it that you don't miss a single class. Correct, don't miss a single class because only for this chapter we are allowing the videos to stay for a prolonged period of time. And so, and I have already announced this that by the time we will reach 31st of April 2024, entire course will be given to you in your Google Drive. Is it clear? So you need not require to worry on that particular account. But after the end of this particular chapter, we will not allow the video to stay on even for five minutes to be very honest with you because we are pressurized by what we call our associate sites and various sites with whom we have got the agreements. So please try to understand this. See to it that you attend each and every class regularly. Next, we will meet you on Monday. Remember one thing, Monday to Friday, we have kept the timings and tomorrow is saturday and then sunday these are the two days available with you that is the reason why i am not moving further intentionally and that is why you must have noticed i was going pretty little bit slowly today also anyway so taking into account all these factors i hope that things still are coming up to your expectation and i received lots of messages in the youtube i hope you would continue this particular trend of writing your feedbacks and not telling that feedback should be full of flattery no nothing like that whatever you felt regarding the class write it but write it in youtube comment boxes these are the chats because chats will get deleted very soon okay then time to say goodbye hope you have enjoyed this particular session as usual and looking forward to meet you on monday to sit till that particular time have a very lovely lovely good night